I like to send this song out tonight to Bob and Mary. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing on my own. Make mistakes, I often slip. Just calm and flesh and bones. But I'll prove someday just why I say I'm all the special kind. For when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. For he knew me, yet he loved me. He whose glory makes the hell. Praise God. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I'm glad that he knew me. And there's a songwriter that says he loved me. You see, Jesus loves you unconditionally. Doesn't make any difference who you are. He loves you anyway. Well, praise God. And so you see, my mind, he cares about you. He cares about you. You're the reason that He came. I know that He came to seek and to save the world. But if I would have been the only one, He would still have come. If you had been the only one, He still would have come. You say, but, but preacher, you don't know me. No, I don't. But God does. And so you see, that's what really counts. God knows you personally. And He loves you. My, my. And He doesn't have to have a reason. Unconditionally, He loves you. When He was on the cross, you was on His mind. He knew that you would be lost and undone without hope. Beyond this veil of tears. And so he willingly, willingly gave up all of heaven, stripped himself of his powers. My, my, and so you see, yes, even though he, he didn't take all those powers with him whenever he came down, he was just like a human being. He was born of the Virgin Mary. A human being, mama, born in poverty, just like many people are today, born in poverty. Even though, you see, whenever we get a little older, we don't have to stay there. Why, in this great country in which we live, 
in times gone by. We could work our way up. You see, we're fastly, fastly losing those privileges. And so I'm glad today that I don't have to worry about anything because I won't be here that much longer. I'll be bidding this whole world goodbye because I've got a home on the other side. Jesus said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Heaven wasn't made for good people. Heaven wasn't made for religious people. Heaven was made for a people that have been born of the Spirit, that love God and want to do that which is right. That's, that's the kind of people, for people that are forgiven, that's the kind of people that heaven was made for. It's not that we're perfect because we're not. We still have a lot of blunder. We still make a lot of blunders in life. We falter. We fail. We're disobedient a lot of times to God. But you see, we have an advocate sitting on the right hand of the Father, and the Bible says he's making intercession. You think of that. He's making intercession for the saints of God. I know people said, well, there's not any saints in this whole world. Yeah, there are. It's people that have been forgiven. We are the saints of God. And to hear the songwriter say, I want to go. I want to be one in that number when the saints go marching in. If we've got the blood of Jesus applied to our hearts, we're ready to leave this whole world and we'll go marching in with that great band. My, my, uh, that's going to be going up one day soon. One day soon, Jesus is coming back. And so you see, we can say it like this. Uh, we might be having it rough today, but help is on the way. Well, glory to God. I'm in no hurry to leave, but I'm ready to go. Ready to go. My prayer is that you're ready to go, and if you're not, you ought to get ready. Jesus took your place on that old rugged cross. He loved you unconditionally. He Think what a price that he paid. What a price that he paid. He gave his life's blood. You see, the life is in the blood. And as he hung there on that old rugged cross, blood streamed down his arms. Blood dripped off of his feet. The soldier come along and punched him in the side with a spear. Blood and water came out. Blood run down over his face where he was, had wore a crown of thorns. Blood run down his back where he took them many lashes. My, and he said, by my stripes, you were healed. So you see, all that Jesus done, then we ought to do something. What can we do? The greatest thing we can do is say, God, I realize I'm a sinner and I want to be saved. I want you to come into my heart. Make your abode there. I want to go to heaven when I die. When I leave this whole world, I want to have that assurance that my name is written in the book of life. <laughs> well, I'm glad that Jesus gives us that assurance today. Without that assurance, you see, it's not a think-so salvation. It's not a hope-so salvation. It's a no-so salvation. He said we know if we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He says we know if we're born of the Spirit why? Because his spirit agrees with our spirit. And we know we've come out of darkness and we're walking in the glorious light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And people will know there's a difference whenever you get saved. So I praise God for his mercy and for his grace. Thank him that he's no respecter of person. He said, whosoever will can come and take the waters of life freely.
You see, God wants you to take from him that which he so freely offers to you that your soul can be cleansed. Uh, my, my, uh, down in your spirit, you know uh, uh, that you are okay. Everything's fine and you're ready to leave. Well, praise God. We want to send our broadcast out especially uh, to all those that are sick and afflicted. Uh, and my, uh, those that don't know which way to turn. I know we're living in a day and a time. There's a lot of people out there that's not working and they think, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, we need to look upward. We need to look upward. That's the reason today uh, that this old world's in the condition that it's in. <laughs> <clears throat> you look back over our lives and uh, back down through the centuries, you can see uh, that America lived in prosperity uh, my, uh, and was able to climb the ladder of success. Uh, uh, but you see, we've got to the place today uh, uh, that we don't want God no more. We're trying to get rid of God. Uh, we've kicked him out of the schools. Uh, we've kicked him out of most of the churches. Uh, my, uh, we go to church and we say, well, uh, my, uh, we have a good time, but honey, can and I tell you today, a lot of churches is just like a social organization. Uh, they just gather together and sit around and talk. Uh, they don't talk about God. They don't talk about the Bible. They plant their gardens and mow their yards. Uh, uh, and to do all of those things that to do of any other uh, classical organization. And so uh, I'm glad today, my, my, that I've been born to the Spirit, washed in the blood. I, I, I want to serve Him. I want to be able to climb up just a little higher and do all that I can for him, for the glory of God, for what he's done for me. I can't say what he's done for you, but I know what he's done for me. I know where he brought me from. I know that he didn't have anything to work with. You see, you've got to talk for yourself. You've got to have your own, te own testimony. Uh, you've got to tell your own story. I can't tell your story, but I can tell mine. My, my, how many times the devil's tried to get rid of me. Uh, but you see, I'm still here yet today. I don't know how long I'm going to be here, uh, but I'm still here yet today. Uh, and so I'm glad for that. Uh, and so my prayer is that God will just bless you. Uh, you'll be lifted up uh, and your heart can rejoice in Christ Jesus. Uh, I want to thank Marlene and John for uh, uh, the, uh, the offering that they sent us. And my, uh, we praise God. And, you know, I can tell you truthfully, uh, honey, if it wasn't for three, four different families uh, that stand behind us, we wouldn't be here very long. Uh, but, you see, I thank God for those uh, uh, that support us. I don't say much about it. Uh, I just thank everybody for their gifts. Uh, but, you see, only you know what you've done. I, I don't know, uh, but only you know what you've done. And so I I'm glad that God's still God yet today. I'm glad that God's still God. And my, my opinion is, as long as I'm doing what God wants me to do, He's going to put me here. He's going to make a way. And so I'm thanking God for His mercy and for His grace. And so my prayer is today that if you don't know this man called Jesus... <laughs> The one that I like to tell you about. Uh, am I the one that takes care of me? He'll take care of you. What do you mean? My, He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Lo, I'll be with you always, uh, even unto the end of the way. Well, praise God. Uh, and my, we're going to uh, pray for those that are sick and those that are afflicted. We'll remember Crystal in her prayers uh, uh, today. Say hi to Ruth and hi, Irvin. Uh, uh, my, uh, uh, we have haven't got around to visit very much in the last little while. There's been a lot of sicknesses, and uh, my, we've been taking our uh, daughter-in-law to the uh, doctor. And so, uh, you see, just first one thing or another, uh, you got to be about the Father's business. He's He's got a lot out there. And so I praise God. And so we're going to pray, and then we'll have a Sister Nancy come back and sing another song. And I, I know I kind of got carried away. I, I have took up a lot of time, but my well. It all belongs to God. And I just thank Him for letting me use part of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we call upon you today, we thank you for the opportunity to be here.
And I pray, God, that you would reach down, touch those, Father, that are sick and those that are afflicted. Heavenly Father, I know today you said the anointing destroys the yoke. And so, Father, that the Holy Spirit would just uh, fall on that one God and that anointing uh, would begin to move all over their bodies. Uh, and God, they could be healed. Uh, they could be set free. Uh, and God, those limbs would be strengthened uh, and they could rise up, uh, lift up holy hands. Uh, unto the Lord because he's our God and there's none like unto him. Bless those God uh, that has stood behind us and prayed. Bless those Father uh, who have helped us out financially. Uh, Heavenly Father we know uh, God without you uh, we can do nothing but with you uh, all things are possible. And so Father we thank you uh, for the singers that comes. Uh, I pray God that you would just pour out your blessings on them. Uh, Heavenly Father, I uh, thank you. Uh, you said you're not slack concerning your promises. Uh, and God, uh, you said you had blessed those uh, that puts forth an effort. Uh, and so I'm praying today, God, that you would intervene in people's hearts and lives. Save the lost. Uh, heal the sick. And uh, God, send a revival into the church today. And uh, God, uh, because we wandered forth far, far away. Uh, direct our hearts and our minds. Uh, and God, as we continue in the service, uh, and we'll thank you in the name of Jesus. Uh, praise God. Well, Sister Nancy, come back and sing for us. <coughs> <coughs> about anybody else but you know I love that old song we had a Christmas dinner our family did not too long ago and me and my wife was married on the 21st day of December so I asked my daughter-in-law if she would sing that song I said I'd like to sing it to Betty but I can't because when I start singing it, I start thinking about all the good things, the places that we would love to go and visit. But you know, as the songwriter says, time and treasures has prevented us from doing all of that. 
And so we went and done the things that we knew that we ought to do instead of doing what we wanted to do. But whenever she got done singing, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. <laughs> and so you see, my God knows what he's doing. And so I'm glad and thankful this today that God's still God. That he still has everything under control. We might think, well, no, God's not in control. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And so, you see, uh, we think he's not, but yes, God's in control. And that's the reason why that before too long, if things, things keeps going the way they're going, if the wheels of time keeps rolling like they are, it won't be long until Jesus is going to step out on the clouds of glory. And the Father is going to say to the angel, sound the trumpet. And he says, when the trump sounds, whoo, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with Jesus in the air. Another songwriter came along and he wrote another song. He says, there's something going on in the graveyard. I'd like to be standing there at the headstone of some of those old saints of God. When they come up out of there, I bet you know, we don't know the time nor when it's going to be. And so we'll just wait and go with them. And just praise God as we're going through the air. And so I, I praise God today. There's a verse of scripture that comes to my mind. And you pray that God would just have his way in our hearts. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. He says, if my people, which call themselves by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. He says, I would hear from heaven. I would forgive their sins. And I would heal their lands. Well, honey, it don't take somebody that's real smart to look around us today and see that our land is sick. Our country is sick. We're in a bad, bad shape. We can't get nobody to agree on anything. And so, a lot of us, I'm, I'm afraid. And you know, I am, I'm afraid that the church is going to have to stand responsible for a lot of things that's happening. You say, why? Because we don't pray. We need to pray. We need to seek God. If America has ever prayed, if the church has ever prayed and sought God's face, it ought to be today, and we ought to repent. And I know whenever you start preaching repentance, uh, uh, the first thing that people do, they look at you, and they say, Preacher, I'm not doing nothing. Well, then if we're not doing nothing, we need to repent. What do you mean? He said the fields are white. Lift up your eyes and look out. What are we doing to try to build the church up? We know. And there's probably a lot of people that's under the sound of my voice knows the church is empty. How many churches do you go to that has anybody in them under 30 years of age? Our churches is going to be gone. Why? Because people are dying off. They're getting old. If you've ever seen a church pass away, I've seen two or three of them. The older people just kept passing away one at a time. And whenever they were all gone, they shut the door and locked it. There's a lot of churches could be open if the church would come alive and be about the Father's business. The Father's business is telling people that Jesus cares about you. How many of them know that you care about them? 
What do we do to let people know I care about you? It's been several years ago, but I'll share this experience with you. It's been several years ago when me and my wife first went into the ministry. I hadn't been in the ministry very long. We lived down in Rome County. And there were people that lived almost on top of us. One morning, there was a, an older couple that lived beside us and they were both sick. Both of them were doctoring and, and we expected just any day for either one of them or both of them to pass away. We got up one morning. The children, my wife got the children ready and they went to school and when we were sitting there at the table drinking cup, a cup of coffee and I looked out the window and I saw our neighbor come around the house and he was wiping tears. And he came out to the front yard gate uh, and I got up and walked into the other room where I could watch him to see uh, what was happening, where he was going to. And he, whenever he went out the gate, he came up our way. And whenever he came up our way, I stood there and watched him with uh, amazement, not knowing uh, what he was going to do. And he came up to the corner of the fence and he cut across our yard. Our yard didn't have a fence around it. He cut across our yard and started towards our front porch. I walked out on the porch and went down the steps to meet him because I just knew that his wife had died because the closer he got to me, the harder he cried. And whenever he got up close to me, I reached out to take him by the hands and he put his arms around me. And he stood there, we stood there. I didn't know what he was crying about, but by that time I was crying too because I, I just knew that something had happened to his wife. Directly whenever he kind of come, got to his composure a little bit, he, he backed up and he said, Preacher, I just came over to tell you we heard something last night that we haven't heard in years. And I looked at him and I said, you did? He said, yes. He said, it was kind of warm last night and you had your windows up and we had our windows up and me and my wife were sitting there in the living room and said, I said to her, listen. He said, we heard you and your family having prayer last night. She said, we haven't heard that for years. Honey, can I ask you a question? How long has it been since your family has heard you pray? How long has it been since you sat down at the table and looked up and said, God, we thank you for the food that we're about to eat? You see, we don't take time to pray. I know a lot of times people eat at a different time. We, we can't all get together, but we can once in a while. And whenever we get together, we ought to hold hands and pray. Talk to God. He says, seek my face. Turn from doing nothing to start doing something because People are going to be weighed in the balances, and a lot of it is the responsibility of the church. The blood is going to be on our hands. Why? Because we haven't done nothing. We stand by and watch everybody else. We've watched a lot of churches die, and we talk about them. As people drop out and people drop off, we think, well, now it's not going to be long. There won't be nobody left. But there's more people in the world today than there's ever been. Why is the church empty? Why is the church empty? How long has it been? Back several years ago, my daddy worked in the woods and they were in a revival meeting at the old home church. And there was a man came down the road packing his lantern going to church. Dad was in the barn. He worked in the woods and he was in the barn unharnessing his horses. And while he was unharnessing his horses, he prayed. I was praying for the revival. And that man heard him. 
And whenever he got to church, he was so excited because that he heard somebody praying. How long has it been? Our time's come and going again today. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach out. Touch people's hearts and people's lives. Help us, God, to renew our, our faith in you. Heavenly Father, that we'll have a determination, God, to do all that we can for the glory of God and for the furtherance of the gospel. Father, many times we go to church on Sunday morning and we feel we've done our duty. And so I'm asking you, Father, to forgive me for my sins and my iniquities. Strengthen me, God, that as I go forth, I can be a light shining in a dark place. Have your way in this service. Bless those that have ears to hear. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you is our prayer until this time next Monday.